it has been estimated that up to a third of all RVers are women who travel alone. And in this video, we're going to interview three of them for you, and they're going to tell of their adventures. We met these solo women travelers at a recent campout in Michigan's Upper are Peninsula. You? This is Lisa Gruner. Lisa is a recent widow from Huntsville, Alabama. She invited us inside her RV to talk about solo travel. Lisa, tell us about your travelings right now. Right now, I'm just going to continue traveling. I recently lost my husband about two months ago, and one of the things that we we had talked about before he passed was to continue. I mean, that he had he had worked really hard at making sure I could do everything. Um, I had been doing most of the driving the last couple of years because of his health, but I could do almost I can do almost everything on the rig. You know, I can hook it up, I can back it up, I can a lot of the engine stuff. So. I knew that's what I wanted to do. I mean, I'm, and I've done solo a good bit, but I'm going to keep going. I mean, he would want me to. So that's what I'm doing. Um, I've got several trips planned this year, some that we were going to do together. Um, you know. And how many years have you been traveling in the Class uh, B? Bill and I have been, tra we have been camping probably 10 or 15 years, but only the last nine in a motorhome. Before that, we had a pop. We had a hard-sided camper, and then before that, we had a pop-up. What would you say to a lot of women that would say they were just going to give it up and that they can't do it by themselves? I, I can't imagine saying that. That's kind of strange to me to, to feel that way because there's too much to see. Lisa, what are the lessons you've learned about a woman traveling alone? Not to be terrified. <laughs> I mean, that is the, the, the biggest thing. I see a lot of women talking about it on Facebook, and they, they spend a lot of time wondering, what kind of protection can I take? Do I need a gun? Do I need bear spray? And I, don't ha I, I, I admit, I don't have any of that in here. Um, I just follow my instincts. If I don't feel safe, I don't stay. Um, but I overnight at rest stops. Um, I've stayed at a Walmart or two by myself, and it's, it's okay. You know, you just kind of keep aware of what's in your, your uh, uh, surroundings and move on if you feel don't feel safe. So because you've been doing this so long, share some tips and ideas that you give anybody out there. Don't sweat the small stuff, big time. I mean, you know, a lot of people want things, everything to be perfect, you know, and just, you know, I, you don't need much. You can go with a little. You don't have to have everything. You just kind of make do with what you got. You can get, allow yourself to be creative and be flexible. You know, so you, you know, you don't have to stop at every Walmart and find something else. You just do with what you got. Maintenance. How do you handle things that happen out on the road? Well, maintenance, if it's minor stuff, like my, I have a Mercedes Benz a Sprinter. Um, so it needs death, um, oil, all that kind of stuff I can kind of do myself. When I'm out on the road, I know I can call the Mercedes-Benz assistance because I did have that happen a couple of months ago. I had my fuel filter get clogged. And after, you know, I call them and I talk to them and I, I, I stopped at a garage and we decided to try to make it home before, and go to my local garage. But at least there were people I could reach out to. And I knew that they could direct me to somebody that would help me. So, you know, like I say, I use the resources that I have. I know I have them. Well, I know, I know a lot of women worry that they're being victimized by men in garages and stuff, you know. But I've not really had that experience. I don't know. Of course, I haven't done it very long by myself. I haven't really had any major things except when I, my fuel filter clogged up. But I had my mother with me, so I, I told my, you know, it's like, Mama, just... You know, pull, play, play your handicap card, but because she was, <laughs> you know, she had a cane, and I was like, so you know, you, you, they're very sympathetic, and we ended up in like four different dealerships trying to find somebody that could change a fuel filter, in which they couldn't. It was a holiday weekend, and it was okay, but everybody was very helpful. Nobody was, no, um, you know, they were so helpful, and they, and you, we can't help you, but go try them, and and so forth. So I haven't had that experience of of feeling like I've been victimized. So I think. I don't know if it's when you kind of set yourself up for it, you know, you just go in and you tell them what you know and you tell them what you need and you don't take any guff. 
You know, I think most people are really kind and good-hearted. I think there's just a few bad apples, and we hear a lot about those, but I think most people are, are genuinely trying to do the I right was, thing. I was thinking that just the other day. You know, there's so few uh, folks that really will do bad things. You know, there really are mostly good. You know, you just have to expect it and just go from there. Talk about the friends you've made in this whole RV road trucking community. I have to, I'll have to say, I, I don't think of them as friends. They're more like family. Um, when Bill passed away, there was probably 10 or 15 people on my list I called. I mean, they, you know, I call my family, but I call my other family too. Because we've been, we've seen each other on and off. We see each other um, at different events. Um, so, like I say, there's people all over the country and all over Canada, too, that if I need somebody for whether it's the you know East Coast or the West Coast, there's somebody I could call if I really needed help. Um, like this last trip, I stayed two nights in a rest area. But the last night, somebody said, well, why don't you just park in my driveway? And she wasn't even home. She just park in the driveway. You'll be safe there. Don't worry. And I did. So, you know, I people offer up things and... and they're, they're, some of my best friends are, are my um, traveling buddies. Next up, meet Lynn Ellen Kaiser. She's another solo female traveler who loves the RV lifestyle, even though her husband doesn't share that passion. But that doesn't stop Lynn Ellen from seeing the world. Okay, Lynn Ellen, tell me your story about why you're a solo traveler. Well, I got my rig about four and a half years ago, and... Um, I wasn't sure my youngest graduated from high school and I wanted to go out and start seeing and start doing and I was able to retire at 50 while my husband keeps working and um, I got this older road trek here uh, it, fairly inexpensively and thought well let's just see if I like it and it took me about six months uh, before I took it out for the first time and the first time was an absolute disaster took a lot to get back at it and then I did and I've loved it ever since. Now does your husband share the passion? I know he's still working. Does he enjoy being on the road <laughs> traveling? No, no, he doesn't. Not in the road trek because he travels uh, two to three weeks out of the month for work. So he was in China this week. He'll be in Germany. So he's all over the world traveling and getting into a smaller space and camping and traveling is not what he's really interested in right now. So so this is why you're a solo traveler. That's why I'm a solo and traveler. You tell me where you've been, what you've seen, oh, what gosh. are your hopes? Uh, I have been all over the eastern half of the United States. I haven't gotten to the western half yet. Um, I last uh, 2016, I did about 92 days in here, and then I travel outside the road trek a little bit too with friends and things, and I go to music festivals. And this past year, it was about 75 or so days that I did and I did a lot more traveling with friends and other things too. Um, I have some non-road trek trips that are coming up that might impact it a little bit but I just love to get out. Um, I'm not afraid. Um, I, it's always interesting when people are saying we were talking at dinner and, and you know it's like well aren't you afraid? Um, no. No because you meet a lot of good people and if you have common sense and pay attention to your surroundings I mean bad things can happen anywhere you are but it really is, um, you meet good people. And I've had times where I've pulled in and it's been after dark and I didn't know what I was doing, uh, looked like it was full. And people come out and go, hey, do you need a spot? Here, park in front of me. And I've actually shared spots with people in various places that were full. Met people at gas stations who said, hey, I'm camping here, it's full, but you know, you're allowed two units and we have a tent and you have a road trek, you can camp on our spot. And I, you know, I just meet people all over the country. Now, how about the lessons you've learned as a solo traveler? Well, I think many of them are the same that, that any traveler would have, uh, whether you're traveling together or apart. Um, as a solo, um, I don't follow my own rules, but I always try to get there before dark because I like to scope out the area. And I actually don't always do that because I always end up stopping so many times on the way that I get there late. Um, but as people say, you trust your instincts. And if you get someplace and you feel, I don't know what it is, but I just don't like this, then just keep going. Now, am I hearing that you make reservations no, a lot of the time? Never. Or, okay, never make <laughs> reservations. I, I won't say that's true. Um, I go to road trek outings mm -hmm. and I have reservations there. Um, a couple of places in Florida that I like to go, 
uh, when I go. Um, this is the first time I've actually made reservations because I wanted to get a waterfront site and I'm going to stay for a little bit. So I do that, but in general I don't do any RV parks. Uh, rarely. I've only done, I think, two. And I do state parks. The biggest challenge is finding them open in the wintertime because I love going off season. So I don't really travel as much when it's really, really busy. But as far as advice for other solo travelers, um, it's pretty much what most people say. You just trust your instincts. Um, don't do stupid stuff. You know, I, I kayak. If I kayak, I have an inflatable that I take with me. Um, and I do go out alone. But I'm always cognizant of being back in time, of staying close to shore, of the conditions that I'm traveling in, um, what I take with me, all those kinds of things that, you know, when you do things alone, you have to. And I don't go out in any rough weather. I don't go out in you know, dangerous places. Uh, like here, when we were, we, we got here, when a lot of people started getting here on Thursday night, we had a night hike down to Tequamanon Falls, which I love night hikes, What's but I don't generally here? do them, and I would not have done that by myself. But we had, gosh, say maybe 20 people? Mm -hmm. I believe so. Yeah, it was probably about 20 people that went down, it's and we all st morning. we stuck together, <laughs> and uh, got down to the falls, okay. got to see it at night, that's shining right. all our flashlights everywhere. And so things like that, that's a great thing when you get out in a group like this, because you're, you've got each other's back a little bit, and doing things that you might not do if you were alone. Because again, if you're, if you're alone, if, if something happens and you slip and fall, you're out there by yourself, there's not great cell phone coverage around here. Finally, let me introduce you to Kiki Dunnigan. Kiki loves the outdoors. The wilder and more remote it is, the better she likes it. She hikes, snowshoes, rock climbs, and fishes, almost always traveling alone. Kiki tows a brand new Airstream base camp travel trailer and says women have nothing to fear about solo travel. Kiki, you've been doing this forever. Tell us what, what it's like to be traveling alone. It's, it's really amazing. Um, I have a husband, I have a family, I have kids, and they're not really interested in this. So at one point I decided that I would just do this on my own. Um, I, I wanted to explore North America and I wanted to go to amazing places. And I've been to Glacier National Park. I've been to the South. We did a blues and barbecue thing. Sometimes I still go all by myself. Sometimes I join travel groups, the road trekkers. Um, but for the most part, I have found that as a solo traveler, I have the freedom to make the trip my own. And what it does for me is it, it helps me become just more full. I become a more full person when I do that. And, and I think solo traveling has the advantage that no one else is deciding where I'm going to stop and where I'm going to go and where I'm going to explore. So I get to just do it my way. Get to sleep in. I get, get to, to sleep in. Get up and go whenever you want to go. No eat laundry. wherever you want to eat. <laughs> quit when you want to quit. No schedule. Right, exactly. Now, Kiki, you're in this beautiful Airstream base camp. Mm -hmm. What other things have you camped in? Oh, gosh. I've camped in the back seat of my car. Jennifer, I've camped in an igloo that was built. <laughs> I have camped in what I call my box in a truck, which was a small truck camper. I've camped in an older Airstream that I had restored. Um, and this is my latest thing to camp in. So I, um, yeah, I've, I've had quite a few different things that I've camped in. And of course, originally it was always tent camping. What is it that you like most about this kind of camping? The thing that's nice about this is that I can go absolutely anywhere. I don't have to have electrical hookups or water hookups. I can fill my tanks. I can use my solar and battery power. I can do something you know very well, boondocking. Um, and I love to just be able to go and roam and find a little woods to pull off in and I don't have to worry about what, what facilities there are because everything I need is right here. Um, and it just gives me total freedom. I have complete and total freedom. Give me some advice for other solo travelers. I think if you're going to travel solo, you need to be smart about it. You need to, um, I like to kind of deviate from my plan but I, I always let someone know where I'm going to be and I try to just be really smart about it and if I get a bad feeling about a place I move on um, but I think the best piece of advice I would give a solo traveler is a do it um, and B get everything you can out of it. Did you hear the common thread through those interviews? Trust your gut, just do it and have fun.
I'm Jennifer Wendlin, and before you go, please subscribe to our RV Lifestyle channel right here on YouTube.